Well, as soon as I get this camera adjusted, um, I had a lesson all made up, Christmas lesson. But I'm just going to talk off the cuff. Uh, my favorite teacher, of course, my applies ownership, but and and the spiritual and psychological world, we say my. My favorite teacher, uh, Pastor Melissa Scott, the wife of uh, former pastor and teacher, Dr. Jane Scott, gave a message uh, about the true meaning of Christmas. And because of the environment we're in now, with the political upheaval and emotional stress and physical stress most of us are going through uh, with the COVID and now the Omicron and all that other stuff. Um, I never felt more spiritual coward than I do now because I'm hiding behind getting shots and um, I'm really trusting more in the, the medical or the science but I learned from Dr. Scott the, the healing powers of the Lord's table. Uh, most of us call it communion. And so the reason I've survived this long, the reason I've survived through um, relying on the Lord that heals us is because I take communion and uh, I don't believe that I would be talking to you right now because um, my brother Paul Kent died of the complications, mainly pneumonia, but there was complications relating to the COVID. And I visited with them. Uh, mainly that was my purpose for coming here, was to visit with my brother Paul. Uh, we used to joke with each other and, and say, listen, we ought to have one more get together before one of us gets promoted. And that's how Christians make each other feel good because uh, to be absent in the body is to be with present with Christ. So we consider that getting promoted. It's sort of like a win-win. If you get really sick and you're praying for healing and you die anyway, well, you're, you're home with Jesus because Jesus called you home. And so this is, how, this is how we sort of ease the pain for our friends and relatives and loved ones uh, that, you know, are going to be really sad. But uh, like me, I'm experiencing my brother Paul dying. Um, I comforted myself. I felt sad because, you know, I'm, I'm like jealous. I want, uh, I want to be around my brother more, longer than, you know, than just the period of 80 something years. So we have to look at it in that term. So, 
Dr. Scott's wife taught a message on Christmas. And she titled it The True Meaning of Christmas. And the true meaning of Christmas, exactly as she read to us from Luke chapter 2, and I believe she started at verse 10. The major, the major meaning of Christmas is what the angels that came to the shepherds watching their flock. Now, a lot of people add to the legend about, you know, the manger and stuff like that. But the major message, okay, for Christmas is fear not. You can go through argument. It was the 25th when he was born. No, it wasn't. It was around April or May when he was born, when Jesus was born. It doesn't matter. Because when we get into these baits, most people get a little apprehensive about it. So fear not, because born to you, whenever he was born and born to you as a savior. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And also, as the apostle Paul quoted, we are now in the kingdom because we were adopted by Christ. That's why the Apostle Paul is considered the apostle to the Gentiles. And he explains it all. Because the book makes the Christian whole. A whole Christian is the book. And our trust in the book is, is what sustains us. Because our faith is based upon belief because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by listening to the word. So, our faith is based upon belief and by hearing the word sustains our confidence. So what we do then, we act in confidence because like John the apostle says, this is the confidence we have in the name of Jesus Christ, that we have eternal life, John 5. I believe it's John 5, 13. So our actions that we take by faith is to be baptized so that we go down into a watery grave and reckon that old man dead for the remission of sins. We rise to walk in newness of life and we're added to the body of Christ. Why? Because God in Christ, by the Holy Spirit, saves us for himself. He doesn't save you because that preacher gives you an emotional appeal. Come to Jesus, repent, and blah, blah, blah. Fear not. Because born to you this day, whatever day, you can probably look it up in, a, in a Luke. I think Luke details the gestation period of Elizabeth, Mary's cousin. That makes uh, Jesus, I think, three months or so younger than John the Baptist. That's why John the Baptist came telling people to repent because the day of the Lord is hand. And there comes to you a Savior. 
So fear not. You'll have trials and tribulations. But Jesus has overcome the world. My name is Myron Kent. Uh, you can email me at oneevangelist at hotmail.com or you can call my answering service. If you want prayer, just leave a message and I'll pray with you. The number is 765-814-2014. Myron Kent, 765-814-2014. Call my answering service anytime you like, day or night. That's why I got a landline, and that's how I monitor my calls. Myron Kent, signing off. Fear not, for Jesus has overcome the world.